Welcome back to Security Simplified. So last time we talked about the first step you can take in order to build a secure application. We talked about how to identify the requirements of an application, as well as the importance of planning your security around those requirements. So this time, let's talk about what happens after that. If you're into building software, you've probably heard of the Software Development Lifecycle or the SDLC. The SDLC basically describes the five stages of application development, which are requirement, the requirements phase, the design phase, the coding phase, the testing phase, as well as the release phase. You start by listing the application requirements and make sure that you plan for those features accordingly. So if you're building a messaging app, you probably need a way to let users sign in, let them uh, log in, let the user send private messages and so on. So the first step is all about understanding what you need to build and it will help you in designing your application and coding your application in the next phases. So the next phase is the design phase, where you're designing the application structure. So you're essentially taking the application requirements you gather from the last step to plan out the structure of your application. Uh, you might need to pick a way to implement authentication to let users log in and sign up. You might need to pick a way to store data. And you might need to find a way to transport data between different machines. And then in the coding phase, you actually build out these functionalities, right, that you laid out in the design phase. And then after that, you'll need to test the applications, both in terms of functionality, usability, security, and so on. And then finally, you release the application and maintain it over time. But what does all this have to do with application security? So when we look at the uh, five stages in the SDLC, we also see five distinct chances of integrating security measures into the development process, as well as five opportunities to really make sure that your application is as secure as possible. So let's first start with the requirement and design phases. And the key to these two phases is to think about factoring security into the planning and the designing of your application. So starting from the requirements phase, when you're identifying the functional requirements of your application, you should also try to identify the security requirements of those functionalities as well. So for instance, if you are transporting data, do you also need to store and transport sensitive data that you should protect from third parties? Or do you need to take in user input and process it? In that case, you might need to think about implementing some sort of input validation. And will this app perform risky functionality such as file uploading? And in that case, what kind of security measures do you need to implement in order to make sure that your application is doing it securely? So the next step is to plan the application design around the security requirements. So we take the security requirements that we listed out in the requirements phase and figure out how to design the application around these requirements. And in this phase, we're typically asking questions like, oh, how should we implement authentication and authorization in order to ensure security? How should we handle user input safely? What kind of input validation should we use on different types of input? Where do we back up code? Where do we back up data? What kind of protocols for encryption should we use in order to store and transport data safely? So these are the questions that you need to ask in the design phase. And the key is really to design the app securely by considering its security requirements along with its functional ones. So for the coding phase, you can put in place measures that ensure that development is being done securely. So one of the first thing to do is to choose a secure programming language and framework, for instance. You could also implement policies, guidelines, and standards on how to handle different security situations safely, like how to handle untrusted data safely via uh, validation standards, sanitization, and output encoding. How do you implement proper error handling and logging? 
So having a standardized policy and having it laid out and during this phase will really help you deal with these situations and make sure that each potential weak point in the application is properly handled and consistently handled. You should also employ a SAS tool or a static analysis tool in this stage to continuously scan your code during development and get rid of the security, risk, security vulnerabilities as soon as possible and as much as possible during this phase. Static analysis tools automatically identify vulnerable patterns of various vulnerabilities in your code so that you can fix them right away. And this will make things a lot easier for you during the testing phase that you don't need to fix everything all at once. So next up in the testing phase is all about implementing a wide variety of security tests to test your application's implementations and make sure that no severe bugs can make it to production. You might do things like running DAS tool or dynamic testing tools, conducting a penetration test, or running your own security testing code. Another thing that you can do is to conduct a manual security code review. So during this review, you have other developers cross check your code to see if your security coding uh, practices and standards are being followed and that any of the bugs that are missed by your scanning tools can be spotted during this phase. You can also use an SCA during this phase or a software composition analysis tool. SCA tools keep track of your application's dependencies and alerts you if any new uh, publicly disclosed vulnerabilities are found in your application's third-party dependencies. So a lot of the times, I think we don't start considering security until this phase, the testing phase. But this phase should really not be where your security effort starts, but this should really be instead, you know, a fail safe to catch the vulnerabilities that somehow slip past security protocols implemented earlier during your SDLC. And then finally, after the testing phase, you release your application. You can, after you release the application, you can build in routine security tests like dependency monitoring tools and static analysis tools so that the application can be monitored even after it's released to the public. You can also consider starting a bug bounty program or a vulnerability disclosure program to let third-party security researchers safely report security bugs to your application. So this entire process is what people mean when they say to shift left. Shift left security means to perform security testing and checks earlier rather than later in the SDLC. So instead of integrating security considerations um, into only the later phases of software development like testing and release, we should also incorporate them into the earlier stages like requirement, design, and coding. So by considering security during the application's requirements and design phases, you can plan out your security measures before any significant effort is wasted into implementing insecure designs and architectures, right? And a lot of bugs can be prevented just by choosing the right framework, the right programming languages, and the right third-party dependencies. And by conducting security testing throughout the coding phase of your application too, you can find the security flaws before a feature becomes really complicated or becomes too integrated into the rest of the application. And this will ultimately save you time and security effort. So that's why security should not start after you're done writing code. But instead, it should be a constant consideration before, during, and after your work in the IDE with your code.